my very favorite member of Congress. <laughs> you say that to all Congress. No, just to you, Congressman Conyers. Uh, Chairman Conyers. But that, and you, know, you know how good it feels to say Chairman Conyers? Yes, yes I do. I, I, I mean, this is to my Okay, we're here to talk about health care, and uh, let's let's assume we get we keep our Congress and we get the Democratic president of the White House. Where do we go? Well, we go to the same process that we go for every bill that we enact into law. We start off with hearings and in the appropriate committee, which would be Ways and Means Committee. Uh, the Senate has to do the same thing. And I don't want to start off complaining, Ellen, but the Senate always trails our initiative with the Leahy of the Senate Judiciary Committee. And I am trying mightily to make uh, sure that we, we don't keep sending things over there that they can't get past turn into law because after all, we're not a unicameral body. We're just a Senate and a House of Representatives. In your view, uh, what what do you think needs to happen in terms of health care, like the two or three top most important things? Well, the, the top most thing is that it has to be universally considered a human right. That, that it is not conditioned by anything. The second thing it has to have taken out of it is the, uh, the, the profit taking that makes this just another business. We are not selling shoes. This is not an automobile factory. Uh, providing health care is a national obligation that has tremendous ramifications on our national security, on the health and happiness of all our, our citizens. So the, once you do those two things, make it an a, a, a indisputable human right and take the profit taking out, then you come to the third factor. The third factor is that we have one universal single payer. We have one universal single payer insurance company. We we do not have. Did you know we have 1,700 more than 1,700 different forms of health care insurance? I do. I used to be in the health care industry before, oh, that's I, right. before I did this. So. I was reading. Yeah, in several ways. Yes, you were. I remember now. So you you know that that th this is considered by many people a business. And in businesses, you have to make a profit. Well, not only that, when I was in healthcare, and this was in the 80s, uh, we actually had meetings to say, how could we drive up the ancillaries, the non-bed and board? How could we drive up the, 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 the care in terms of blood tests or whatever, so that people made a profit? I mean, I couldn't believe my ears back then. If Michael Moore had only knew, known now what I know, he'd have, you'd have been on in that world why uh, documentary that he did exposing the fact that health care is a system uh, in which uh, the profit, to make a profit, you have to turn back somebody's claims. Somebody's got to be disallowed service. That, that's, that's where the element of profit comes in. You know, it's interesting. The one thing that Huck Huckabee has talked about Oh, that's my bass playing buddy. I know, but yeah, it, it I, is prevention, and yeah. and there we have not done a lot in terms of prevention. I mean, I just got on the old fat doctor and lost weight uh, as a prevention issue because after I lost my eyesight, I kept falling. I can't have the weight on my knee, all that kind of stuff. So, so, so that's that's an issue. But the question is, what do we need to put in legislatively in terms of prevention in this country? Well, prevention, if, if you have universal health care, prevention is built in because it, it doesn't turn on whether your policy includes prevention or, or not, or a little bit here or a little bit there. It's, it's, it's the basis of the whole medical system because without prevention, everything is, is uh, brought to the medical scene at the last minute when it's in the worst possible circumstance. 18,000 people or more a year um, 
lose their lives earlier than they should have because they weren't able to get into a hospital. And so prevention is the basis of this. And I'm, I'm glad you make this an important fourth point in our discussion. One last, one last health care question, Mr. Chairman, and that is what happens if we get a Republican president? What do you, Major Chairman, the Democrats do? You know what? I hadn't thought about this before <laughs> now. It's, you're the first person to raise that question because even the Republicans are announcing that it's probably going to be a Democrat. Well, I think it is too, but, but you know... But, I, but, but if, if, if it, I've been in this town too long, I've seen tsunamis. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'd have to uh, regroup, uh, but the battle would go on anyway. We'd just be set back X number of years, and there'd be a lot of people, by the way, who would die prematurely earlier than was necessary because it took us lo that much longer to get a universal single-payer HR 676 health care plan. Chairman Conyers, thank you so much. Always a great pleasure. No, this is my pleasure this time.